join tool or the number two key on your keyboard. Remember I showed you that keystroke before? The join tool will join roof edges together 100% of the time. 100% of the time. The only reason that tool doesn't work is if you've selected the wrong edges to join. If the roof edges were not meant to be joined together. In the first place, one roof's way too high to join into another roof, or there's a break in one of the edges that you're trying to join together, and Chief's going to give you an error message that says it can't move that. That's normal. The height of the baseline in Chief is determined in many cases, which again, it's determined by the ceiling height, but it also is determined by the, rafter, by the ceiling joist thickness and the rafter thickness, and it's also the height of it is determined by um, the raise off plate number that you put in. And again, I don't really care in many cases where it puts it. I mean, I'm always going to try to get the automatic roof generator to do it right. I'm going to use the automatic generator a couple times in a plan, and then I'll deal with everything after that manually. So where do the where do you use the join tool? Again, that's that join tool. It's used to join hips, hip to hip. It's used to join ridges. It's used to join hips to ridge, all right? I said earlier, you use the join tool 100% of the time to join roof edges together. You don't pull that edge up. You use the join tool by clicking those two edges and it will close it automatically and everything will be joined perfectly correctly. Join tool works like a charm, okay? It's used to create valleys. Join tools, click those edges. You can also, to create valleys in a plan, click on these spots. So again, I could click here and here with the join tool, or I could click here and here with the join tool and join those edges together. I call it valley to fascia or valley to gable end. It works. Works great. You can also use the join tool to join ridge to fascia or ridge to ridge. Ridge to fascia to keep that's what a Dutch hip is, a um, uh, gambrel roof, I'm sorry. You know, this is a Galwing Grant gambrel. Again, this could all be different pitches, but it's basically you're doing a ridge to a fascia. And now Chief does it automatically for you in many cases when you touch those two edges together in this situation. It will put those in the right place. All right. Reshaping roof planes using the CAD tools. Let's just go do a quick roof manually. All right, I'm going to not even mess with it. I'm going to spend a few minutes here showing you something. <clears throat> Let's go create a new plan. I'm going to add a roof to this plan manually. Okay. I'm going to put a little room addition out front here. All right, so what I'm going to do, let me tile the screen. Let me bring up a 3D view so you can see this happen as I do it. Again, in my classes, I kind of run you through this step by step, but since we're very short on time, I'm just going to do it real quickly here. So I'm going to tile my display. I could go Shift F6 or tile vertically, and it's going to bring these two views up, and now I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to start by double-clicking the roof icon, and I'm going to set my pitch to, I'm going to say a 10. I want a 10-12 pitch. So you always set your default pitch first. Then I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to no, I drew all these with ex with I drew all these with uh, interior walls. Let me change that. Use exterior walls. We got to draw it right, right? Okay. So there's my building. Pan that over. All right. I've got my roof pitch set to tw 10. I'm going to go to my wall, see how my cursor snaps to the outer main layer. I'm going to draw a line there. And that line is going to produce uh, this object that looks like a roof overhang. I'm going to move, let go of my mouse and move my cursor toward the ridge. Version 10 is a little bit different than this in that you can't see the box. You, can just, you have to just click and it will produce the box. So there's my 10-12 pitch. All right, I'm going to do that on four sides. Again, I'm going to do this real quick. It's short on time. All right, now I'm going to join my edges together. So now again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to join hip to hip. All right, I mean, I could have done this automatically. It would have worked fine. And every time I do this, I'm pushing the number two key on my keyboard. Number two to join. Number two, join this hip to this hip. Number two, hip to hip. Number two, hip to hip. Number two, ridge to ridge. And again, I'm sorry I'm going really fast, but... We're just running short on time. Number two, I call that ridge to hip. Number two would be ridge to hip. 
ridge number two joins hip. Okay, I mean, I could have done that automatically. Not a big deal. All right, so there's my hip roof, just like that. Let's let's go add on a room in the front here now, different pitch. I'm going to go in here, and I want that to be a 612 pitch. Same overhang. Draw a baseline. Click up toward the ridge. Draw a baseline. Click up toward the ridge. There's my roof. Ridge number two joins ridge. Here's a little trick for you. I'm going to click on this edge right here. I'm going to click on this number. See where the arrow ends right there? I'm going to type in a negative number and this line will go past the end of the arrow by whatever number I type in the box. All right, so I'm going to click the edge, click the number. I'm going to go minus 12. I want a 12 inch overhang there. My edge goes 12 inches past the end of the arrow. You can do negative numbers in chief to move things to certain spots. I'm going to take this point right here and I'm going to drop it on that line that'll snap that edge perfectly together. All right, boom. I want to create a valley. I'm going to hit my three I'm going to hit my number 3 key 3 times. 1 2 3. I had three breaks. I pull that up. Now I'm going to join valley to valley. Valley joins valley, okay? Click, number two, click. Click, number two, click. There's my valley, okay? Alright, things like the overhang is off, alright? Not a problem. I'm just going to use one of my many solutions. I'm going to take this point right here and I'm going to pull it onto that corner spot. and they'll be perfectly the same height now. That's how you can fix things like that. That's one of the many options that you have available. Let's make a change to this. Okay, yeah, I could have done all this automatic. Not a big deal. But we wouldn't have learned anything if I would have done that. All right, here's what you can't do automatically. I'm going to take this roof pitch, right, this roof edge right there. I'm going to open it to the dialog box. First thing that you always do in a roof select what you don't want to change from those four buttons. I don't want to change my ridge, but I do want to change the pitch. I'm going to make it a less steeper pitch, five. Click OK, and there's my roof pitched up. Okay, it looks fine on the floor plan, but it's not really fine. That will leak, so we have to rejoin the edges hip to hip. See what it does? Two, hip to hip. Boom. Then I have to reshape this edge. Number two. I'm sorry. Click on the edge. Number three to break. Do that again. Click. Number three to break. Pull that down. Pull that edge down. There's fixed. Okay. There is a roof that if you would have tried to do that with Chief automatically you'd be here all night. And that's the beauty of working with the manual roof tools. They work. The join tool works 100% of the time if you've clicked on the right edges. Again, I'll talk about that in just a second, how you can reshape some things using these tools. So as you can see, I mean, it doesn't really matter what kind of roof you have. You can move and manipulate these roof planes all you want. Put them wherever you want. The, you know, the roof tools in chief are one of the. It's the best part of the tools in the program. I wish the darn platform tools would work as well as the roof tools, but at least we know how to deal with it. All right, enough of the roofs.